At UMB, we use a preponderance standard for all student conduct decisions. So what does that mean exactly? When using the preponderance standard, you must determine that which is more convincing, more credible, and of greater weight or probability. To determine if you have a preponderance, ask yourself, based on the information presented, is it more likely than not that a policy violation occurred? For visual learners, picture this. If you put the information presented on a scale, just over 50% of it must suggest a policy violation to reach a preponderance. Said another way, it's 50% and a feather. This is a less stringent threshold than the standard used in most criminal proceedings, beyond a reasonable doubt. We use a less stringent threshold because only university sanctions are at issue, as opposed to life or liberty. There's no death penalty in student conduct, and we don't send anyone to jail. For sports fans, picture this. In a criminal trial, the prosecution would need to run the entire field to score a touchdown to get a guilty verdict. In student conduct, the decision maker would only need to bring the nose of the football across the 50-yard line. Be aware that your exposure to legal proceedings in real life or while watching TV or movies could impact your thinking. It's not uncommon for hearing officers and hearing panel members to feel uncertain about a decision. When using the preponderance standard, you don't need to be 100% certain. You only need to decide what is more probable. The same standard applies regardless of the offense. Your internal compass may find it a bit easier to find someone responsible for a lower level policy violation using the preponderance standard. You may internally feel like you need a little bit more for a more serious charge, but that is inconsistent. Our standard is what our standard is.